First of all, introducing our challenger. The enemy of the Lua Corner. He's going to step in and he does the ball over. Let's bring on the boom. This is Eternal MMA. All right, everybody, welcome back to Eternal Insiders. My name is Luke, and as always, I am your host, and I am joined in today's video by none other than your Eternal MMA lightweight champion set to defend his title for the very first time at Eternal 80 at the HBF Stadium against American Brett Pastor. I'm talking, of course, about Perth's very own rising star in Quillen Cell Killed. Kind enough to join me on the show once again. Uh, Quillen, always a pleasure having you on here, brother. How is, uh, how is the vibe for you? Uh, over there in sunny Perth as you come into your first title defence, man. G'day, Luke. Um, yeah, Perth very hot at the moment. So, yeah, we're starting to starting to crank up the heat. So, uh, yeah, training's been, you know, it's been a lot harder now. So, yeah, sweating a hell of a lot more. more but, um, yeah, prep for this fight's coming along really well. I don't doubt that, man. You enjoy that hot weather over there in Perth, man. I mean, it's starting to get even a little bit warm over here in Jury, Old Victoria. But I mean, it's 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 got to be pretty nice for you guys all uh, all year round. I mean, I was back there in uh, February and it was pretty damn hot. But uh, yeah, you enjoying that weather over there? Yeah, like uh, the weather doesn't get you know too bad here. Only for like you know even during winter, you know we only have a, a few rainy days and then and then you know the sun's out like pretty much pretty much most of the year. So yeah, it's uh. It's good to be in Perth. I don't doubt it, man. I love Perth. I mean, I've only been there a couple of times, but each time I go over there, I think I don't want to come back here. I'm not just saying that. Like, Perth's fantastic, man. Are you? Have you always been a Perth guy? I can't remember from the last couple of times we talked. You're born and raised Perth, yeah? Yep. Yeah, um, born in Perth. I spent most of my childhood up in in Broome. So yeah, so all the way up up north of Western Australia. But yeah, always always been a, a WA boy. Yeah, of course. I mean, the beaches and everything over there are so nice, man. I mean, you know, we'll get into this a little bit, but I mean, you you fight so often uh, at, at Perth. I mean, I think your entire pro career, you've had the uh, the privilege of being able to fight in Perth. I mean, there must be nothing like that. Uh, getting to fight in front of your, your hometown fans and uh, uh, keeping it real in Perth, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Love fighting in uh, front of my home crowd. You know, it is it is fun to, and exciting to, to travel, to fight, but, um, you know, having... Having all my family, friends, and supporters here backing me in the cage, it's, uh, you know, there's nothing else like it. No, I mean, speaking of travel, man, I mean, the first thing we want to get into, um, just ahead of this title fight, you did have a fight booked at Road to the UFC. For those that don't know, Quillen was booked to fight against Jay Hewan Park at Road to UFC uh, back in August. Unfortunately, um, you got pulled from that fight. Uh, as your opponent got moved up to a main event slot uh, due to here, that yeah. opponent that he had sort of pulling out there. So very disappointing for yourself. But, I mean, can you talk a little bit about what that experience is like? I mean, just being able to sort of get over there, experience a different country. Uh, disappointing, of course, not ultimately get the fight. But uh, can you talk about a little bit about, um, you know, sort of getting that fight and at least being able to get over there and, and see uh, MMA from a different perspective? Yeah, it was, it was great. It was a great experience. Pretty much... Uh we got treated the exact same as the actual UFC guys. So our whole fight week was exactly the same as the fighters on the UFC Singapore card. Um, yeah, it was, it was really cool to see how, how, you know, the, the best show in the world is run very professional, you know, all the, um, all the boxes get checked. It was, yeah, it was, it was really, really cool to see and to, and to be a part of it. But yeah, it was, was obviously very disappointing going all that way, making the wait, and then an hour later getting pulled aside and uh, pretty much saying that, you know, my opportunity is is gone and uh, my opponent's moving up to the main event spot because of, uh, you know, someone that uh, missed weight didn't make it like a professional. Yeah, I mean, it, it sucks for your brother. And I mean, we're all shattered yeah. for you, of course. That uh, It had to be sort of you, and I mean... This is the sort of thing that I guess happens in MMA a lot for various different reasons. Yeah. You know, it's unfortunate for you that it's happened this early in your sort of career that you had to have that happen. But I mean, did you um, did you get a chance to sort of tune into that fight? Did it sort of matter to you to watch that fight back and just sort of compare yourself against you know what you were supposed to be facing? I believe you actually lost that fight. Your opponent lost that fight uh, yeah. in that main event. W what did you think of that fight if you got to watch it? And were you sort of you know thinking, man, if that was me, uh, I would have dusted him up a little bit. Yeah, I, I thought that I thought that exactly. Yeah, I was I was definitely really keen to tune in, and uh, yeah, I watched it, and it was a um, it was very frustrating to watch. Like my opponent just got pretty much just 
just ragdolled the whole fight by um you know by the the guy who was fighting it was just pretty much a a pure the most pure wrestler you can get in the cage i didn't even think he threw any punches he just shot from from a mile away and just just getting takedowns after takedowns and um it was yeah it was, it was really frustrating to watch because i know if i was if i was put in there things would have been very different I have no doubt about it, brother, and uh, hopefully get that opportunity again soon. Of course, we've got the title yeah. fight, uh, the title defense coming up for Eternal, and uh, yeah. you know the selfish part of it is we're we're glad to have you back here, uh, especially yeah. pointing out the HBF Stadium in Perth, Western Australia, because what a venue that is and what a city Perth is for MMA. And we're going to talk about that later in the convo. But um, you know, was there any communication from the UFC after pulling you from that fight? Yeah, you know, did they ever did they give you any information immediately about hey, look, we'll keep you in our thoughts for anything that sort of pops up? Did they give you any avenues to potentially come back? I know road to UFC is something that only comes along every now and again, but um, you know, was there any communication from them as to when they might potentially get you back for something else? Dana White's contender series is always a possibility. What was there anything there from them? The only thing I said is I just need, you know, just need some more experience, so just some more fights. So um, they were saying that yeah, it's hard to because they were, you know, they they want to look after me and and you know they wanted to see if they could like you know help me out with another opportunity but being only four and one it's uh i understand yes it would be very hard for them like this opportunity that that came around was kind of perfect in terms of the sense i was four and one my opponent was six and one so it was like similar record similar age and experience wise but that's um that's uh hard to, to come by so i pretty much just got told to you know keep fine to keep racking up the wins and um I know they'll have their eye on me. No doubt they will, man. And I mean, as you said, I mean, only four and one, but I mean, on a four-fight winning streak, you know, four finishes. So, I mean, you know, this early in career, you're on an absolute hot streak. So, you know, I'm sure you got plans to, uh, you know, keep them uh, or keep yourself at the forefront of their mind with another huge performance. Yeah. Of course, we got uh, Brett Pastor for your first title defense. A little bit unusual in the fact that we're getting someone international to come over. But I mean, you know, it, it's a bit of a different opportunity to sort of what you'd normally get. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how this sort of fight came about? Was there other potential options? I'm assuming if we had someone local available, someone would have been slotted in there. How did you first find out that Brett was going to be a possibility? Uh, so who, who gave you this communication that uh, uh, Brett Pastor from the USA was going to be your first title defense? Yeah, well, as, uh, as everybody knows, um, uh, David Martinez is like next in line and um, he can't make the date. On uh, 28th of October, he's uh, not medically cleared. I've heard so. Um, so uh, you know, I'm not. I'm not going to wait around. You know, I want to. I want to keep fighting. I want to stay active. And um, I think next next uh, we got, tried to get uh, Josh Togo as well, but um, he's got a he's got a fight booked as well internationally. I, I presume UAE Warriors as he's fought on before. And then yeah, then we looked around. I think there was like three other fighters locally. And um, you know they all they all said no. So um, you know the uh, the team or like Cam had to go and look look elsewhere, which is you know quite unfortunate that um you know you got to give like a shot at the Aussie title to you know a foreigner. But that's uh you know that's uh, the way it's got to be right now. And I'm I'm very happy to to take that challenge. Yeah, I mean, which kind of leads me to my next question, man. And I mean, knowing you and the gamer that you are, and that you know. We, Anyone that's a fan of Quill and Soul Kilda is uh, familiar with you, know that you're willing to sort of get in there with anyone. But now, was there any sort of hesitation when this got pre presented as a possibility to, you know, fight a guy outside of you know, the Oceanic region? I mean, you guys would all keep an eye on each other from the Australian scene and the New Zealand scene, that sort of thing. But to get matched up with someone that you, w I would assume you would be very unfamiliar with uh, in pretty much entirely, was there any, uh, you know, hesitation from your part in, in taking a fight from someone from the US? Not at all, man. Not at all. Like, as soon as I found out, yeah, it was thumbs up straight away. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not out here trying to cherry pick my opponents, you know, just looking for an, an easy win. You know, I'll take anybody at any time. So it, it doesn't matter who they put in front of me. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to put my thumbs up and say, yeah, give me that challenge. And what's the book out on Brett Pastor? I mean, similar sort of record, three and one from yourself. He's coming off a loss. Quick turnaround for him. Uh, last fought in September, I believe, uh, but he has fought under the uh, One Championship banner. What do you sort of yeah. know about him? I mean, there is some videos of him online. Have you had a chance to check him out? Do you let your coaches do that sort of thing? Uh, what What do you sort of know about Brett, if anything? Yeah, I know he's um he's had a quite a lot of I think combat sambo experience, 
and um, yeah, moved over into into MMA. He got like a local a local title, I think, in a in America, a lightweight title, I think, in his like in his first, you know, in his pro debut. Yeah, fought on on one, like you said, had a win uh one for one on there. Other than that, I haven't really seen too much. I just watched a bit of his fight, so I just you know got an idea of what he's gonna bring, which I think he's just gonna be you know a tough guy trying to come forward and uh, shoot for the legs. I know he's going to come to wrestle. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be prepared for that. No, so I assume when uh, when you sort of look at Brett and what you sort of know of him and you put your skills separate against his, is it safe to assume that you believe, you know, if he's uh, if you think he's going to be sort of shooting on you and looking for the wrestling, uh, you would think that the clear distinct advantage with you uh, against him would be in the stand-up game, knowing as we do the brutal hands that you have and the stand-up acumen that you've got in your game? Yeah, of course, you know, I, but I think I got the advantage everywhere. Like, you know, that's that's just me. Like, I I seen his last fight. He got put on his back. He got taken down. And he didn't look too comfortable there. So, so you you'll see me, you know, getting the takedowns as well, trying to wear on him. We we know we got that submission game in your back pocket too, man. A couple of sub wins in your record. So uh, no doubt you got confidence in your game everywhere against yeah. him. I did want to talk a little bit about too. I mean, we just talked about Perth at the top of the conversation, but I mean. You talk about just Perth as an MMA hotbed right now. I mean, there's just so much special coming out of that city. And, and I say that because, I mean, you look over my side of the country here, you know, close to sort of Melbourne. I mean, you got, you know, Melbourne, Sydney, Gold Coast, Brisbane, that sort of thing, you know, all sort of in a row. And you got Perth over there just sort of doing their thing over the other side of the country. But there's just so many good things happening there right now. And I mean, if you cast back to, I mean, you fought on Eternal 73, right? You know, that was the last card that, you know, Stephen Erseg, you know, our former flyweight champion, fought on, obviously now in the USC. I mean, Frank Jankowski, co-maining event uh, for, you know, under yourself at Eternal Lady. He fought on that card and won, and now he's fighting for Stephen Erseg's vacant flyweight title, yourself going for the uh, for the vacant flyweight title, yourself going for the lightweight title there, of course. And, I mean, you just look around, I mean, the other guys are like JDM in the UFC. I mean, teammates of yours, Luis Joe, Combat Academy, and Cody Haddon. You've got guys like Rod Costa, now, all the gyms and everything that are over there. What is it about Perth MMA, do you think, that's just so special? Oh, no, maybe we'll just... You know, we're just built different over here. Something in the water, maybe. Um, I am not sure, but uh, we're doing very well. And, you know, maybe just out west, out in the, you know, out in the middle of nowhere. I think we just built just like, just a little bit, a little bit tougher, maybe. Just a little bit, you know. <laughs> uh, Matt, I, I've heard that. I will out myself here as a bit of a, I'm a, I'm a nerdy sim racer online. And one of my mates uh, is from Perth. And he's always giving me shit over here about how soft we are with this part. And he says the same thing. He's like, yeah, mate. <laughs> He's like with the Perth accent and everything. He's like, yeah, you guys don't know about like the sun and all that sort of thing over that part. He's like, you come over here, mate. He's like, you're just going to melt away. So, and I believe him. Love Perth and all as I do, but uh, there's something definitely going on there, man. Uh, I'm very fascinated by Perth MMA. Um, the first Eternal event I went to was that Eternal 73 card and, and just huge. I've said this a few times on a couple of podcasts that HBF Stadium is just absolutely rocking. You've been there. You fought. You've won there. I mean, the, the, the crowd support and everything. Um, there just doesn't appear to be anything like it. And you can see that on the broadcast. You see that in UFC Fire Pass. It, it's absolutely huge. Is there anywhere comparable to fighting at the HBF Stadium? I, I know you spent pretty much your entire pro career fighting in Perth at the HBF Stadium, but, I mean, it's, it's pretty unique and it's pretty special with the fan side of things over there in Perth. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely the best venue I've fought at, you know, in my, in my whole career, you know, amateur and pro. I've fought in a few other promotions in... Um, in my amateur career, but yeah, nothing compares to HBF Stadium, especially when that thing gets packed out. It's uh, oh, it's it's so good. Like I love walking out and just seeing it, you know, just just full of people. You know, it's a it's a stadium, and um, not many not many fight promotions, you know, not many local fight promotions actually get to, you know, be held in an actual stadium. No, it's huge, man. And we, of course, can probably expect another huge turnout of uh, fan support for yourself. I mean, I actually spoke to Frank Jankowski last night and just even casting back to, I mean, his fight on that same Eternal 73 card and, and just the Frank the Tank, Frank the Tank. I mean, just the Perth guys show out for you. I mean, uh, we can expect a big turnout uh, for your first title defense, no doubt, from friends and family, yeah? Yeah, of course. You know, there's going to be a heap of people there. And uh, I'm sure I'm going to get, you know, the support from, every single person in that building, you know, as a, you know, as not just like the hometown boy, but hometown in terms of like being the Aussie boy and having an American guy come over, you know, I'm sure he's going to get 
quite a few view, views. So uh, it's going to be yeah, it's going to be very cool. No, I just add to it. I mean, there's a couple of storylines built in there. You're absolutely right. Of course, you'll you'll get the hometown support no matter what. But I mean, especially in Perth, Western Australia. As I said, no one does it like Perth. The fans over there, whatever you guys are doing, you, you get behind your boys, you get behind MMA, obviously UFC, local MMA and eternal MMA. It's absolutely huge, man. And um, I, I'm personally very much looking forward to this card, very much looking forward to this fight, watching at home. Of course, anyone that's not attending that can tune into UFC Fight Pass and check that out. But I mean, for yourself, man, I mean, as we said, you come into this one on a four-fight win streak, four finishes. Uh, you had three of those uh, in the first round. Uh, the last two of those were by a KO in the first round. What are you sort of thinking from this one? Are you expecting to make it a potential hat trick of first round KOs after your first title defense, perhaps? You know, it's, uh, I, I think so. You know, it's it's the mustache. You know, ever since fighting with the mustache has been first round KOs. So, you know, I'm going this one going to be extra big, extra thick, and the knockout also going to be extra big. The mustache is undefeated for first round <laughs> KOs. We've got that. That is going to be the quote at the top of the uh, the social yeah. media there, man. We- <laughs> The mustache has got to stick around for good. Oh, it's, it's permanent. I'm loving it, man. I'm loving it. Like, like I said, I can't wait for this one, man. I mean, this will be your first title defense, assuming in your mind, of course, you're getting the job done. What's sort of the plan yeah. beyond that? I think last time I talked to you after a win, we getting back on the rums with the old man. I think it was your old man. Was it you that the, the old man was breaking out the bottle of rum to celebrate? Was that yeah, that's, you were so yeah, good? That's, yeah. yeah, it's tradition. It's tradition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm loving it, man. So that, that's what we're doing. Yeah. Are, we, are we going to break out the rum for this first title defense? We're breaking out the rum after this first title defense, yeah. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it, yeah. yeah. Very much looking forward to it. Hopefully you get to celebrate with a the drink there, man. I mean, yeah. just on that, just a final one for you too there, brother. I mean, as we said, a win here gets you your first title defense. You move to 5-1 and one as a professional, uh, you know, as one of the hottest prospects in Australian MMA, especially coming out of Perth and everything that Perth's doing over there that's so special. What does your immediate future look like for you, in a perfect world in your eyes. You set yourself up for so many good things, you know, at such a young point in your career. Uh, what 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 would you sort of think that this is going to set you up for going forward in your career? Well, I know after this fight, I think early next year, I'll be fighting David Martinez, you know, presumably. You know, that's ideal. And then after that, I would like to, you know, also fight Josh Togo. You know, those two are the, you know, the top two guys in the other than myself in the country at the moment. So, after I beat them two, I, I consider I've wiped out the whole lightweight division in Australia. So, and then after that, seven and one, I'll be, you know, I'm pretty sure I'll be knocking on the doorstep of uh, UFC. No doubt about it, brother. David Martinez and Josh Togo have been put on notice. Of course, we've got to get through Brett Pastor at the yeah. HBF Stadium October 28th for Eternal 80. It's going to be a huge card. Be there live and in person. I've got no doubt that that HBF Stadium is going to be packed out as it does attract more fans over and over again, of course. If you're not there in person, you're checking out live and exclusive on UFC Fight Pass, the hottest platform that you can potentially fight on. So, Quillen, as always, brother, thank you very much for your time. I know you're very busy coming into fight camp and everything, so always a pleasure to have you on here, man, and uh, all the best. Very much looking forward to this one. Thanks for the chat, Luke.